Welcome to The Thriving Christian Artist, the podcast where we help you connect with God to bust through the roadblocks that have held you back for years, create the work you love, and really live the life you know God created you to live as an artist in His kingdom. I'm Matt Tommy, your host. Let's get started. Well, hey, everybody. It's Matt Tommy, and I'm so glad that you're here with me on the podcast today. I've got my great friend in the studio with me, Cindy Walton. Cindy, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> glad to be here. Cindy is an incredible painter here in the River Arts District, and we've got to know each other over the years. I just mm-hmm. love your work, working in cold wax and, and oil paint, oil paint, all yeah. the things that you do. So. Yeah. Tell us just a little bit, you know, this whole podcast is really about getting to know the stories of, of artists and, you know, people walk into your studio now and, and see your incredible work, but obviously there's a backstory to that, how you right. got to where you are and, right. and that sort of thing. So have you always been doing this full time or how did you come to it or back to it? And, no, um, always wanted to be an artist. I uh, went to school the first time in art and science and ended up majoring in art and, um, Came home, um, was told by my dad I needed to get a real job. and um, <laughs> As we all have been, yes, right? <laughs> yes, and did start working in uh, at college admissions and doing stuff like that and was married and had the children and stayed home with the children. And the um, art kept speaking to me, and there were several people who came into my life towards the end of my 30s, early 40s, I called them angels, <laughs> and um, they kept saying, you need to paint, you need to paint. And so I felt I didn't quite have the courage to put my work out to people and felt I needed more skills, so I went back to school. Wow. And uh, and that was a whole trip within itself, being yeah. 40 years old and back in school with a bunch of 20-year-olds. <laughs> And, um, Everybody's looking. How did you? How did you walk through that? I mean, was that a real challenge for you? Um, yeah, trying to juggle family. Uh, the girls. I have two daughters, and they were, well, I think, late elementary, middle school. Yeah. And so it was. You know, I wasn't always home right at four o'clock, but they were getting old enough where they could handle it. And, and cell phones had started coming around, so they would call me when they got home. Sure. You know, and I would be home shortly thereafter. So. But yeah, it was good. It took me eight years to walk through the BFA program at UNC Asheville. Mm-hmm. And in 05, I had my official second, I guess you could say, second undergrad degree. Right. And um, had my first body of work behind me, a couple of them actually at that point. Wow. Um, started displaying and the Arts Council here in town. Sure. So, but it was really the encouragement of certain people. Some were Christians and some were non-Christian. Mm-hmm. Some was a guy I worked with in the cosmetics, in the fragrance counter at the Belks, wow. at the local department store back in the day. And he just said, you know, I really think you need to pursue this. Yeah. And I don't think he was a believer at all. I know so many people that are listening to the podcast are are folks that, like you, are coming back Mm -hmm. to their creativity. Was that a struggle inside of you? Because, you know, to have kids and a a family and all that, and and yet at the same time feel this pull back to your art? It wasn't hard because I stayed involved with creative aspects of my life. I painted T-shirts. I used to sew a lot, Mm -hmm. and so there was always something going on, whether I was making an item of clothing for the children or a wreath for the house. But to go into a more formal kind of art was um, a step. Yeah. Yeah, because it was a real time commitment. Mm -hmm. And um, I was staying up pretty late at night and then getting up early with the girls and getting them off to school and, you know, helping with the house. And luckily I have... Uh, my husband been very blessed with a great husband yeah. who has always been supportive of art yeah. career. I think that's so important. I mean, my wife Tanya is a we're kind of opposites. You know, mm-hmm. she's the <laughs> the left brain. You know, yeah. high school administrator, right. all that sort of thing. And people always ask me, well, how do you balance? You know, all the books and the paying taxes and all that. Yeah. I was like, I have a great wife. Yeah, you know? <laughs> well, I have a great husband. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, but it's. Mm-hmm. It's a juggling act, and I've also gotten to the point where I'm not afraid to reach out. I've actually started um, paying a couple people to help me with things. I mm-hmm. just don't know how to do. And yeah. the learning curve was so huge, like like doing this podcast. Sure. For me, it would have been so huge uh-huh. to figure out how to do it. And so I have people um, that I've been able to 
get in and work with me that know me and help me with my um, now with my newsletter. Yeah. You know, it used to take me hours to put together a newsletter. Yeah, sure. And now I just, you know, give the information to uh, uh, my person who helped me, a web person, yeah. and off we go. So, sure, sure. But That's so <laughs> important, I think, for all of us to, you know, you have to be in the zone, obviously, to create and to be able to stay there. Um, I, you know, if you're always doing this, that, and the other, and you're not able to kind of be in the zone creatively, right. it really right. takes your mind. And so I'm always looking for ways in my own life to try to think, what are the things only I can do? Right. And then how can I augment, you know, With, to keep me in the, in the sweet spot? Right. You know, so that's... And find others that their gifts or their talents or these other things. Exactly. Because exactly. it's hard to know, to do everything. Yeah. Everybody I know that's successful, that you know, I ask, I love to ask successful people, you know, find out about their life, and right. And one of the things almost everybody says is, I waited too long to hire my first person. Right. And once you start getting help, you're like, whoa, I need more help. And right. You don't feel bad about right. it anymore, and yeah. it's because uh, there can be a struggle. I know for a lot of us as as solopreneurs, if you will, yeah. you know, to to try to want to do everything yourself because you. You can or you like that part of it, but you you have to have help. Right. And you have to let go of some of the control. Exactly. That's a big thing. (laughs) That's where God comes in. That's a whole other podcast, (laughs) right? Right. 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 Well, talking, you know, speaking of the Lord, talk about how uh, your relationship with the Lord has not only walked you through your life and that sort of thing, but but also, you know, informs your creative process. And because I know for some people, that's a very you know, out front sort of narrative part of what they do. And right. then other people, it's kind of a, a, a theme that runs the undercurrent right. current of their life. So I would say with me, it's an undercurrent mm-hmm. and it's not something that I boldly, you know, not that I haven't, but on my work, but I just feel, Oh, God gives us all kinds of gifts and talents. And some of our careers are, are different. Some people are administrators, some people are business people, mm-hmm. and some people are artists. And I don't feel like I'm in a special category, but it's what he's given me. Yeah. And my voice, his voice. I mean, creation is, is creative. I mean, he began the Bible with a creative <laughs> act, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, but I find that I can get lost in the criticism of, of others and trying to focus on what other people say and things like that and not focus on my work. And that's when I have to really pull back, get into scripture and get into prayer yeah. and remember why I paint mm-hmm. that's and, so it's, good. and it's to glorify God. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm always reminded of that quote from the Chariots of Fire movie, you know, that where the guy's running, he's, he says, you know, he's being asked, why do you run? He's like, I feel God's pleasure when I run. Yeah. And I feel that. I feel like so many of us feel that when we're in the creative process, right. that there's there's just this knowing that I, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. It's, I that. like that comparison because it's like when I'm really getting out there and not not doing something tight, not doing something that I know will go into a gallery or yeah. is something a client wants, but really in there, I call it playing yeah. and just getting wild and crazy in yeah. the studio and really putting myself out. That's when I feel that joy. Sure. And it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. That's right. That's right. That's when the time goes by and you're yeah. like, oh. It's like, oh no, four hours later. <laughs> but I sure did like that red paint. That's you know? right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You know, I think it's funny having a gallery and people walk in, you have this experience, you know, people will walk in and say things like, well, isn't it just great to be able to play for a living or, you know, you don't have a schedule or things like that. And yet I find, you know, there are very real things that we have to deal with and some of them even roadblocks in our life that we have to walk through. What have been some of the major challenges for you as you've come back to your art and now really thriving in what you do professionally. It's putting that first because mm. I think sometimes we forget we don't have, you know, do we we have a real job? Right. Quote, unquote. We don't, many of us don't go to an office. We don't go to a studio after home, outside of the home. Right. And it's taking that amount of time, whatever it is in your life, because some people with young children only have small, you know, periods of time, but making it consistent weekly. Mm-hmm. 
and making a commitment to that time to paint or go into the studio and play with your tool. Right. That's what, when I teach, I, I talk to students about that because they want to know how to get to where I am. And it's the consistency of, of being in the studio. Yeah. And I think um, I'm not happy. I'm, I'm sad if I'm not there. Yeah. It's just something that really feeds. Right. And, and treating that as sacred space, I guess. Really, yeah. I mean, this is this is what say, I have does to that do. Answer your question. No, yeah. absolutely. But that's that's probably my work ethic in this, that respect, mm -hmm. and just making sure I I get it done. Yeah. And some days it's nothing. Yeah. Some days it's just cleaning up. <laughs> right. But by being in that place, I I'm in the zone. Right. You mentioned teaching briefly. I know that's something you're really yeah. passionate about. Is that come along the journey or you have always taught or um I think I no I haven't always taught uh -huh. um uh, maybe I've taught different things over the years I, I can't say I, I, I know but um I will say I have right now I teach adults right um but I have taught kids at different at different levels I was involved with a group of homeschoolers one time and I taught from k to 12 right and it was art, yeah. And every, you know, art history, a little, and studio, and things like that. But right. I enjoy, um, um, and and being in a studio that's open to the public. The other day, someone asked me if I would be teaching. I said, "Well, I'm talking to you, aren't exactly. I? and I'm telling you about what I do." I said, yeah. "So this is teaching too." And I think it's real important for the public, uh, the American public in general. I don't think get the instruction in museums like folks do in Europe right. do because they're so far away. Mm -hmm. And I I just feel sometimes folks are afraid of art mm -hmm. and don't understand what they're looking at, especially for a person like myself who really is, there's no content. Right. I mean, there is, but it's abstract. Right, right. And so for for something that they can't see a house or a tree in, there, there needs to be some education on what I'm doing. Right. So I think it comes with the, the territory. When it comes to teaching, um, you know, one of the most difficult things I think as a teacher is to try to pull the gold out of your students and not have them replicate who you are. Right. How, do, how do you, you know, there's some tips that for those that may be teaching out there, you know, to really encourage the creativity of the student. Man, that's a tough one. Yeah. And I have students that will come out of my class and I'll, they'll start posting things and <laughs> I actually had a student who walked into one of my galleries in the town not too long ago and was showing her work. Uh -huh. And luckily, it was one that represented me. Yeah. And she said, "Gosh, that looks a lot like Cindy Walton's work." Uh -huh. and, and I have a great that gallery owner is very gracious, and she called me, and, uh -huh. and I never. I prayed a lot about it. Yeah, I was, sure. I was going to approach... Opportunities for growth, uh, right. <laughs> boy, I was going to approach the woman, and I just decided to let it go and see what happens. Yeah. But I really try throughout the workshop is encouraging them to take the tools and step away and find their voice. Yeah. And you can't do that until you paint a lot of paint. Yeah. And someone who's walking in that's a true beginner, they don't understand it. I copy. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things you do in art school is copy the masters. Sure, sure. And I, you know, and I have painted a lot of Joan Mitchells and a lot of de Kooning's in my life because yeah. I love the marks. I love what they were doing. You're trying to figure out what they're doing, but then you need to step away. Yeah. And that's personally, that's when prayer comes in. Yeah. That and um, a lot of journaling and writing sure. about where my voice is, mm -hmm. and I encourage students, but with a beginner, it's very hard for them to understand the big yeah. picture. I'm just doing a teaching this month, actually, in the mentoring group, and it's all on the development of the your unique artistic voice, and I was, as I was praying about it, I was like, this is the hardest thing it is to try to put, huge. and, um, but the Lord gave me this process, and it's been the neatest thing to, to teach this, um, going from what I would call kind of an awareness of, hey, I'm an artist, I like this, you know, I'm emulating, I'm exploring, I'm experimenting, right. to more of an awakening where you start to really limit what you're doing and detach from some of those influences mm -hmm. and find out who you are mm -hmm. into autonomy of 
now I've really found my voice, mm-hmm. and I think for all of us, we're well. I think I'd like to take doing... that class well, <laughs> <laughs> because I struggle with it all the time. Yeah, and I think we yeah. all do because we're bombarded with images. Yeah, and now with the internet, you can look at any. I mean, it's oh, amazing, yeah. Yeah. and I have to really sometimes pull myself away from the computer mm-hmm. and not look at other artists yeah. and really focus on where yeah. my heart's telling me to be. I think that, you know, as I look back at my journey, I made baskets, just traditional baskets, because I like to be in the woods for 15 years. I never looked at other baskets, really. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there was this whole art basketry movement. I didn't know anything. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of in my garage doing my thing. Right. And part of me was like, gosh, I could have gone so much quicker, you know, if I had taken a class. And yet, in many ways, I'm thankful that I didn't, didn't. have social media no. and all of that stuff to mm-hmm. to really, because I've, I've, you know, it, I came to my voice quicker, I think, through yeah. that, because I didn't have all that right. other stuff, you know, yeah. in there. But it's a dance, I think, for all of us. It's yeah. good to turn off Facebook, <laughs> you yeah. know. And, it really is. Yeah. yeah. And, and just be with yourself and... You know, if it means finding your quiet spot, if it's in, you know, kind of, um, a lot of people do morning uh, journaling and mm-hmm. prayer and, and yeah. Bible study, and you might have to treat your art uh, walk the same way. Yeah, yeah. And finding that quiet spot to, to think and to talk, because it takes those times of just meditation on your work yeah. to see it come together. And in our society, we're so busy, 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 if we're not producing. Yeah. It's a negative. Yeah. And you really have to take that time. Yeah, to do it. Yeah. Like you did walking in the woods. Yeah, that's right. Every basket begins with a walk in the woods. It does. There you go. And um, of course, I always tell people it's not nearly that romantic. You know, it's like (laughs) chainsaws and pickup trucks. And (laughs) And mine's not that romantic either. Hauling that stuff around to the photographer. Exactly. You've got a show, and oh, it looks so wonderful. Well, the three hours it took to get it here and exactly. hang it up and exactly. the new muscles you have and exactly. all of that. But. So Cindy, I know there are so many out there today that are in that place where you were, where you were 39, 40 years old and trying to consider that, you know, going back into your art and right. taking that seriously. What would you say to that person that's in that struggle right now? Um, you need to learn how to say no. Mm. And that's, that sounds, um, easy to say. I was involved with a lot of volunteer work. I had to pick and choose yeah. where where I was going to focus my time, and it was never easy. Yeah. It was always hard. and Because um, there's always ball games and church and family right. and all the right. things. Right. And um, I mentioned my husband before, and I will say this. Um, God really blessed me with a, a guy who was willing to do some of those things. Yeah, sure. And um, and he traveled. He was in Europe a good bit. Mm-hmm. And sometimes maybe my assignment didn't get done. Or um, maybe a friend took the kids right. instead of me. Right. You know. And But we all helped each other out. Yeah. All of us. Because that age is so tough. The mm-hmm. kids and so many people work. That no matter what you're doing, um, you need help from other people. Yeah, yeah. And not get it overcome. Yeah, I think it, I've always called it saying... Yes to the right things and no to the wrong yeah. things, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, and it's a challenge for all of it us. It is, it is, and I, uh, you know, I don't regret any of the no's. I don't think. I mean, it was like I was real involved with Junior League, and right. so and it was time to spin off. Sure, I did that when the kids were younger, mm-hmm. and it was time to step back into what I truly love. Yeah. I was a docent at the art museum. Yeah, yeah, on the board for yeah. a time, and. Love doing that. Love that educating part. Sure. But I needed to. Right. And I think so many people struggle with not just the logistics, but even giving themselves permission Mm -hmm. that it's okay. You know, Mm -hmm. am I really created to be an artist? Is this really something that's important enough for me to give myself to? It doesn't sound like you were struggling with that end of things too much. I mean, you Uh, knew inside that. Yeah. I knew. Yeah. But, um, yes, I did know. Good stuff. It was good. Yeah, it's good. It's good to know I am an artist. Doggone it! This is. <laughs> took me a while to say that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think everybody struggles with that because I was always afraid. Oh, you're an artist. Well, could you draw a horse for me? I'm like, no. No. 
<laughs> but you can go through my portfolio and know I could, you know, I was darn good at life drawing and yeah. all the other stuff. And yeah. just kind of continue to step away from that structure. Sure. So if I could draw a horse right now, I don't know. But yeah. I could maybe in a couple days. That's right. <laughs> I know how to do it. That's right. That's but. right. Well, this has been so fun. I know folks are enjoying getting to know you. If they want to continue to connect with you on Instagram or Facebook website, yeah. what's the best way to do um, that? Um, it's cindywalton.com. Okay. And Instagram is at, believe it or not, cwalton57. Okay. I need to update that and get that a little. <laughs> um, Cindy Walton Fine Art on uh, Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, well, thank you so much. I know folks are going to reach out to you. And, I hope so. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I hope absolutely. So. And just as a, whenever you're listening to this, Cindy's going to be a gathering of artisans yes. this year. Yeah. You also teach at Ghost Ranch. Yeah. I mean, lots of other here, right yeah. here in the River Arts yeah. District. So, Art Creek, yeah. Yeah. So if you're looking for a great place and a great teacher, check her out thank there you. as well. So Thank you, Matt. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today on the podcast. Listen, I hope it's been a huge encouragement to you on your journey as an artist. Hey, also, before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other episodes of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. And also, be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or at my website, which is matttommymentoring.com. Until next time, remember, you were created to thrive. Bye-bye.